How's it everyone? Today I'm here with my WWE Hell in a Cell 2016 pay-per-view review. Of course, Hell in a Cell was a Raw exclusive pay-per-view event that took place live on the WWE Network as well as pay-per-view. And overall, like I gotta say, coming out of the pay-per-view, I was not necessarily impressed, but I was pleased. I think the Raw brand definitely delivered another solid pay-per-view here. I think it was pretty much on the same level as Clash of Champions because I did enjoy that show as well. And I thought Raw uh, delivered big time in this pay-per-view. I thought all the Hell in Cell matches delivered big time. And I thought, uh, you know, the undercard was pretty solid for the most part as well. So I think Raw put on a good show. And, you know, Raw is capable of putting on a good show. I know it's, you know, it's pretty terrible on every Monday night. But you know what? When WWE actually lets them go out there and have a good show and doesn't, you know, put all these politics and bullshit booking involved into it, it can produce good quality shows, and this pay-per-view proved it, in my opinion. So, thumbs up to Raw for having a pretty good pay-per-view, in my opinion. Of course, before the pay-per-view started, one hour prior to it was the kickoff show, which featured a uh, six-man tag team match. Cedric Alexander, Lince Dorado, and Sid Cara versus Drew Gulak, Tony Nese, and Arya Davari. I thought this was a good, you know, solid Cruiserweight six-man tag team match. You know, it's unfortunate that the Cruiserweights are watered down on Raw. I thought, you know, the Cruiserweights being on Raw is a good thing because, you know, it's a three-hour show that they would get more time to shine. But you know what? The Cruiserweights, honestly, just have no life on Raw. And just, I feel like they're not, they're nothing special like they're supposed to be. And it's just, it's very unfortunate. And you can tell all these guys are kind of watered down. Tony News was pretty impressive. Uh, but, you know, Lindsay Dorado was pretty impressive as well. So was Drew Gulak. Pretty much everyone was, you know, pretty good in this match. But Cedric Alexander definitely is the, you know, the cruiserweight that's shined the most so far on Raw. He's just absolutely amazing. Even though they, you know, they're watering guys down. It seems like he hasn't watered down at all. And he just re looked really good, especially uh, his uh, interaction with Drew Gulak. Especially the transition when Drew Gulak, uh, you know, locked him in for a pin. Uh, they just had a lot of smooth transitions. And Cedric Alexander hit a phenomenal lumbar check for the win for his team. So it was a good, solid cruiserweight action match. But nothing mind-blowing that it's must see unfortunately so good stuff there but then we go on to the pay-per-view itself which opened up with the hell and a cell match for the united states championship roman reigns versus rusev i gotta give credit to both these guys i did not like their clash of champions match whatsoever i thought it was a boring match and i didn't like it but this match was a big step up from that match i thought these guys went out there and had a really good hell in a cell match uh, well not necessarily a really good hell in a cell match it's a really good match in general i still believe that this match shouldn't have been in inside hell in a cell and you know watching this match it really shouldn't have been they didn't utilize the cell all that much, you know, every now and then they throw the guys into the cell. But they mainly just utilize weapons, they utilize, you know, kendo sticks, uh, the steel steps they utilize quite often in this match. That was their big weapon of choice. Uh, tables introduced, I believe, or just teased. Uh, but they went out there and had a really good uh, just match, you know. I think both guys went out there and just pretty much had a war. Uh, just brutalized each other, especially when Rusev brought out the steel chair, uh, chain. Absolutely loved I uh, love the accolade on the steel, uh, steel steps with uh, Rusev grinding the chain across uh, Reigns' face. Uh, I thought that was a great moment right there. But he had some, a lot of good transitions as well. You know, I think their uh, sequence in the ring with uh, Rusev going for the spin kick and Reigns ducking and Reigns going for Superman punch and Rusev ducks and then uh, Rusev hits the ropes and Reigns comes up with a uh, Superman punch. Uh, there's some good stuff in this match and, you know, it was pretty lengthy too. It was about 25 minutes. But I think in that 25 minute span, they did put on a really good solid match. And uh, I give kudos to both guys for going out there and having a war. Uh, just, you know, nice, slow, not very slow, not like slow, so like, you know, boringly slow, but it was a nice, slow, methodical storytelling, just fight. And that's what I liked, I liked about this match. And I thought both men delivered, like I said, enjoyed their Hell in a Cell, thought it was a good, solid match. Definitely shouldn't have been inside the cell, but you know what? I'm not considering complaining about it. It's still really good. And Roman Reigns wins with the uh, spear when he uh, backdrops or Samoan drops. Uh, Rusev onto the uh, steel steps. Rusev's on the steel steps. Reigns gives him an awesome spear off the steps. Uh, just the way it, it came off, it looked awesome. And yeah, you could saw the spear coming a mile away. And I didn't think it would be anything that special, but the way it was executed looked really, really good. So Reigns wins with a spear, retains the championship. Like I said, really good match. I enjoyed that. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to uh, Bailey versus Dana Brooke. Um, you know, Dana Brooke actually looked pretty decent. You know, if you watch Dana Brooke, you. Would, uh, well, I'd like to think your opinion of her would be that she's terrible because she has been terrible ever since she's been the main roster. But I thought she had a solid performance here with Bailey, and I thought her and Bailey put on a pretty decent match. And you know, it wasn't bad. It was actually pretty good stuff between both of them. I think Dana Brooke had a good showing, and Bailey just had a you know Bailey's Bailey, and definitely uh, a lot better than match Fuchs going Monday Night Raw. And uh, Bailey gets the one with the, ba uh, the Bailey to belly, so that was good. You know, it was a solid performance from Dana Brooke, so I was pretty impressed with her in that match. So good stuff between two of them. Uh, we had a backstage skit with uh, Kevin Owens being interviewed. Then we had a segment with Chris Jericho interrupting Chris, uh, not Chris, interrupting Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley, which Chris Jericho was absolute gold. You know, I wasn't a fan of him in the beginning of the year because I thought his stuff was just bad. But now, like, he's really hit his stride uh, this summer, especially when we started doing the stuff with uh, Kevin Owens. He's really hit his stride. And the list of Jericho stuff is absolute gold. So this segment with Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley, 
absolute gold between uh, three of them. So I was really good sniping there. And then we go to uh, Enzo Amore and Big Cass versus Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Enzo and Cass cut like a five minute promo, which I honestly didn't care about. It was entertaining, but you know, I'm up for their promos that just you know, are just, you know, simple and to the point. I'm not a fan of them to go on for a while, so whatever. Match itself was just whatever, too. You know, he's, he had end zone cast, uh, had some pretty good uh, tag team maneuvers on uh, the club. They pretty much dominated the match, and then Anderson and Gallows were able to get the victory with a magic killer on end zone more. So whatever match, definitely, uh, you know, like your average Raw match you'd see. So nothing spectacular there. And then we go to the Hell in a Cell match for the WWE Universal Championship, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. This match was awesome. This match I thought was a lot better than their um, Clash of Champions match. I thought they just went out there and utilized the Cell good. Kevin Owens played an awesome heel, by the way, awesome video package for this match, by the way, especially the Kevin Owens skit in the beginning of it. Absolute goal with Jericho narrating. But I thought they went out there and had a really good, solid match. You know, Seth Rollins had, you know, I've been kind of skeptical of his performances as a face in the ring because I haven't really enjoyed his work all that much since he's been a face in the ring. But I think he definitely uh, stepped it up a notch here and uh, just had a great show against Kevin Owens and, you know, the little things they're doing, like uh, Seth Rollins telling Owens that he's the man and Owens is telling him, like, shut up, just shut up. Uh, just little things like that made this match great. And, you know, they got, uh, they like I said, they utilized the cell. You know, uh, Seth Rollins did a suicide dive into the cell, which looked pretty painful. Kevin Owens teasing the package power driver even more. I thought for sure he was going to hit it that time because the way he had it, it looked like for sure he was going straight down. But no, he countered it at the very end into a slam. And, uh, you know, they brought tables out. Kevin Owens set two tables out, one table on the ground and the other one uh, on the cage and on, like, the apron. So it's, like, slanted like that on the uh the ring or the apron in the cage and then of course uh kevin owens hits seth rollins with the uh with the fire extinguisher and kevin owens uh mistakesly sets it off he doesn't know what he's doing and hits the referee the referee gets hit with the fire extinguisher well not like hit with it but you know like the the stuff that comes out so the referee got blinded so they had to open the cell to get the referee out and what do you know here it comes running down Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho gets in the ring, locks the cell with him in there. So he's now in the cell. So that was, I guess that was a pretty nice way to get Jericho in the cell by doing that referee angle. But Jericho's in there. Uh, of course, then you got the double team between uh, Owens and uh, Jericho and Rollins. Rollins able to fight back. He throws, uh, he was, he's able to powerbomb Kevin Owens through um, both tables on the outside. Of course, the one that's slanted on the cage and the apron and the one on the outside. Rollins throws him out there. Um, Jericho just gets demolished by Rollins. Rollins actually buckle bombs him, or I guess cell bombs him <laughs> into the cell. Uh, beautiful sequence in the ring by Owens and uh, Rollins where they're just doing counter after counter. And it just came off absolutely beautiful. Even Cole had a mark out for it because of how well it came off. But uh, definitely an awesome Hell in a Cell. I uh, really like this match. Like I guess I thought it was better than the Clash of Champions match. And uh, definitely both men had better showing in this one than their previous match. So I uh, really enjoyed it, you know. But, of course, the numbers name got to uh, Seth Rollins. Uh, Chris Jericho just kept getting involved, preventing Rollins from winning. Uh, Kevin Owens ends up giving him a powerbomb through, through, two, through two chairs. And one, two, three, Kevin Owens retains Universal Championship. And then Chris Jericho attacks Seth Rollins afterwards. So, again, great match. Really enjoyed it. But pretty anticlimactic ending, if you ask me. But... It is what it is, Kevin Owens still your WWE Universal Champion. Uh, from there on, we go to the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match. TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick. This match is good. You know, I don't think it's nearly as good as their Clash of Champions match. I thought the match was a lot better. Uh, this match is kind of not all there. It wasn't an exciting match by any means. Even the crowd was kind of just pretty much dead for this match. Um, they're trying to tell the story of Brian Kendrick, you know, pretty much just trying begging and pleading to win the match. You know, TJP would kick out one every time, just like kind of like showboat in his face, like I'm not gonna let you win this match. So the story was there, but I don't think the entering work was all there. I, th I thought they spent too much time trying to sell the story than selling the match, if you ask me. But ending comes, Brian Kendrick lands on his knees. He fakes, you know, injuring himself to TJP's concern. Headbutts TJP, locks him into the uh, captain's hook, and TJP submits. So Brian Kendrick is your brand new WWE Cruiserweight Champion. Very happy about that. I really wanted Brian Kendrick to become the Cruiserweight Champion at Clash of Champions. I knew he was going to win there. I knew he wasn't going to win there. So I'm very happy that he had the second chance to win it here. And I'm very happy to see where he goes forward. Hopefully they build him up, build him up as a monster heel champion. I want to see him just destroy everyone in the Cruiserweight division until Cedric Alexander dethrones him. Hopefully at WrestleMania. Uh, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. But yeah, excited to see the go with Brian Kendrick going forward. Very happy for him for winning the Cruiserweight Championship, so good stuff there. And then we go to the Raw Tag Team Championship match, The New Day versus Cesaro and Sheamus. 
per usual, New Day cuts a promo like five minutes long. Didn't pay attention to it because I don't fucking care about New Day anymore. Match itself is good. I thought their match on Raw was much better though than this one because Kofi was in this match and of course Xavier Woods was in this match instead, which is not knocking Xavier, but Kofi, in my opinion, has excellent chemistry with Cesaro and has really good chemistry as well with Sheamus. And uh, I thought Kofi really complimented those two in their match on Monday Night Raw, where here you didn't really get to compliment uh, with Xavier Woods with them. But Xavier Woods have a good showing, so, so did Cesaro and Sheamus. There was some miscommunication, you know, Cesaro or, or Sheamus accidentally broke kicked Cesaro, but he did break up the pin when they did pin Cesaro when they tried to take advantage of that. So uh, definitely the teamwork was uh, coming uh, pretty good between Cesaro and Sheamus, so definitely becoming a solitary uh, team. And uh, just bullshit finish, you know, Cesaro has Xavier Woods in the sharpshooter. Big E tries to get involved, but Sheamus finds referee back, hits Big E with uh, Francesca, but Kofi Kingston hits him, uh, Kofi Kingston attacks Sheamus, then hits him with Francesca, I believe. I don't know, Kofi Kingston attacks Sheamus, referee sees it. At the same exact time, Xavier Woods taps out, so the referee rings a bell. Cesaro thinks he won the title, he won the title for him and Sheamus, but the referee declares that they won via DQ, so New Day retain tag team titles. Fuck the New Day, I'm tired of their bullshit, I'm tired of the DQ finishes. I'm just tired of New Day in general. I just, they need to fucking go. Turn them heel or something. I'm fucking fed up with New Day. They even act like heel majority of the times in these title matches. Like, you cannot tell me that the ending of this match did not scream heel for New Day and face for Sheamus and Cesaro. You just can't argue that. And I just, I can rant on New Day for hours right now, but I'm not going to. But Cesaro and Sheamus win by DQ. They'll probably have a rematch on Raw or down the road. So, I'm not, nah. They'll probably lose again anyway. So, whatever. Good match, but like I said, I thought the match on Raw was much better. And then we go to the main event, which was the Hell in a Cell match for the Raw Women's Championship. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte Flair. The first ever Women's Hell in a Cell match. And the first ever Women's Pay-Per-View main event. History in the making right here. Charlotte comes out with a throne-like entrance. And then Sasha Banks pretty much recreates her Brooklyn take or take over Brooklyn entrance from last year. With the, you know, car coming out and everything in security. Awesome entrances. Before the match starts, Charlotte immediately attacks Sasha Banks before the cell, uh, the cell, while the cell is lowering, she attacks him. The cell stops to go on the outside, then they bring the cell back down. They both try to climb the cell. Uh, Charlotte gets down, grabs uh, Sasha Banks, and power bombs her through the announce table. And then they did the whole injury angle where Sasha Banks is being carried out. Uh, Charlotte's going to be declared the winner by forfeit, but Sasha Banks is like, fuck no. She runs back in the cell, and they have their match. Awesome storytelling from the moment, you know, the before the match started, you know, the, the storytelling was Sasha selling. She's pretty much crying because, you know, this is her big moment and it's got taken away because of something stupid like that. And then the moment she heard that she was going to lose the championship via, for, via forfeit, she said, hell no, jumped off the jumped off the uh, stretcher and ran right into that ring and uh, closed that cell door and they went with the match. And uh, just amazing storytelling from both women. Definitely matched the night. Fantastic match. Probably their best match I've ever had. Uh, just... The injury work is great, you know, they utilize the cell really, really good if you ask me. Uh, they utilize weapons like they introduced steel chairs in this match. Uh, Sasha Banks took a nasty dive onto the, uh, or nasty fall onto the steel steps. Uh, Charlotte just monkey flips uh, Sasha into the cage and she landed horribly. Uh, just made her back even look worse than it already was. Uh, just a lot of back work from Charlotte on Sasha here in this match. And like I said, the storytelling was just absolutely superb. You know, Sasha Banks fighting back and just Charlotte pretty much pleading and crying for Sasha to just quit and just lay down for the three count. And uh, just, it's, you know, it's an amazing match here. You know, this is probably be a match of the year candidate. Uh, just both of them went out there and absolutely killed it. And they definitely deserve the main event after the performance they had tonight. But like I said, the storytelling was superb. The entry work was great. You know, Sasha Banks, you know, working with that back, even though she has an injured back, she's trying to work around it. And, you know, even though, uh, she was injured. It wouldn't work out because, like you know, at the, especially at the end when she tried to power bomb Charlotte through the table, her back gave out, which allowed Charlotte to throw her onto the table several times, followed by a natural selection. And one, two, three. Charlotte is your brand new Raw Women's Champion. Are you fucking kidding me? Ah, Charlotte's getting worse than New Day. Fucking anyone, including myself, that's bitched about the push of Roman Reigns has no room to bitch about me anymore after the push that Charlotte's been getting over the past year. They've shoved Charlotte sh so fucking far down her throats, I don't know what to do anymore. She constantly wins. She's a three-time fucking champion at this point. Well, technically four if you include her Divas title win. Over the past year, a year, last year she won her first title, and now she's a four-time champion fucking ridiculous and Charlotte or Sasha Banks gets getting fucked over these title reigns she's had two short title reigns now it's just I don't know what the deal is with their obsession with Charlotte and 
I don't know if so they can have her claim that she won the first ever a woman's Hell in a Cell or what, but it's fucking ridiculous. And I'm just so fed up with the treatment of Charlotte and the treatment of Sasha Banks. It's so unfair. It's so stupid. It's, it's the same exact story as those two. Every single time now, but just a different chapter. It's I'm just sick of it. And it's just, it's old at this point. And, I mean, it's hard to be mad because the performances they both had. and But the ending was very anticlimactic. Like I said, Charlotte just threw Sasha Banks on the table three times and then hit natural selection. Even the crowd didn't even count the wrong at three because they didn't think no way, they didn't think there was a chance in hell that was a finish. But it was. But Charlotte wins the championship. Again, same with New Day. I can rant about that for hours, but I'm not going to. I'm going to save my breath and just... Uh, that's WWE booking for you right there. That's all I'm going to say, you know. Charlotte should not have won that match. That should have been the blow-off between Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Yet, they get the victory to the person that should not have won the match. Just because, probably, that they can say that, oh, she became the first Raw Women's Champion. She became the first ever winner in the Hell in a Cell match. Or Women's Hell in a Cell match. She just, they just want to throw all these accolades on Charlotte. It's pretty sickening, to be perfectly honest. But, yeah, again, not taking away anything from the match. The match is absolutely awesome. Like I said, the storytelling is great. They utilize the Cell pretty much, uh, I don't want to say perfectly, but they utilized it really, really good. Uh, they did some really nice uh, spots on the outside, you know, including into the cell. Uh, there's nice storytelling with the steel chair as well, uh, like Charlotte locking the figure four and Sasha just smacking with the chair to get out of it. Great storytelling, great wrestling involved in the match, uh, but just the ending is just... Why? Uh, but yeah, uh, overall, like I said, I did enjoy Hell in a Cell still. I thought that was a really solid pay-per-view. I thought every single Hell in a Cell match, well, the, the, well, the three delivered. Uh, the undercard was pretty solid for the most part as well. I, I think the only match I would, I would consider not really that good was the end zone cast versus Anderson and Gallows match. But besides that, I enjoyed pretty much everything on the show and I thought it was a really good uh, Raw pay-per-view. Again, you know, I thought the Clash Champion was really good, so I thought Raw, I thought this pay-per-view was really good as well. Raw, if they can continue with these good pay-per-views, it can kind of make up for the shitty Raws we get every single week, but yeah, that'll do it for the video, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like below. In the comments section, if you guys would like, please leave your guys' thoughts on the Hell in a Cell as well. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on the pay-per-view if you guys enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Anything Hell in a Cell related from tonight, please go ahead and freely leave your comments about it. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching the video.